Hi guys, my name is Joey Rasul with another camera review from the world famous Hot Rod Cameras. Today I'm taking a look at the DVX200 from Panasonic. And I've sat down a couple times to record this review because I haven't really found how I feel about this camera. And I hope in a little bit you'll see what I mean. On paper, this is an absolutely fantastic camera. You have a micro four thirds sensor, which is way larger than any other fixed lens camera I can think of. You have 10 bit 422 out, so you can utilize external recorders and get a great solid image. You have 4K 60, you have HD up to 120 frames a second in Vera speed, and you have V-Log. You have logarithmic shooting on a camera that is $4,000 with a fixed lens. On the surface, this seems like a videography ENG camera with all the cinematic elements that you could want to give yourself a cinematic image for documentary travelogue shooting, and it very much is that. For a lot of people shooting this kind of content and looking at this $4,000, $4,500 price point, you're looking at DSLRs or C100s and things like that, and this gives you a lot of things that those cameras don't. The only thing that's holding you back is this fixed lens. But why is that fixed lens holding you back? Honestly, this Leica lens that's on here is a lot better than a lot of the lenses that I see people using on their bare bones DSLR rigs. Even if you are shooting with something like a C100, you don't have the frame rates and resolution that the DVX can offer, and you probably don't have a lens that has the range that this lens does. Sure, there are ways to get better image quality for the same price, but you can't go from a macro shot outdoors to a telephoto shot indoors as quickly with any other camera. The menus give you plenty of options, though they might be a little bit too fiddly, but if you're used to the GH4, then they're not that much of a far cry. In fact, you'll notice a lot of GH4 similarities. I can't exactly tell if it's the same sensor because there are some subtle differences, but as far as the actual processing power, the relative frame rates that you're getting out of it, the dynamic range, the sensitivity, it all seems very, very similar. In the field, this is an amazing camera to use. The battery lasts so much longer than any other camera I've ever used. Even the GH4, the GH4 has a great battery and there were events where I had to switch batteries two or even three times with the GH4 and the DVX was still running on one battery, which is lucky because one battery was all I had. The DVX also has a USB offload function, which is really great. What it means is that you can dump straight to a hard drive from your cards without using a laptop. You just plug in a USB drive directly into the camera and you can dump on site. While some of the party pieces of this camera are great, they won't necessarily help you if you're on a narrative film set. And if that's where you wanna be, is this the right camera for you? Is this a cinema camera? Well, first let's explore what actually makes a cinema camera for you. Is it the dynamic range? Well, the DVX200 has 12 stops of dynamic range and shoots log, just like the GH4. But I was running into a lot of problems with the log on this camera and more so than I was with my GH4. No matter what settings I was shooting at, no matter whether I was using the internal codec or running to an external recorder, I was getting all the noise, 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 noise. Lots and lots of noise, especially in the darker parts of my image. And I know that that's going to get crushed down a lot when changing this back to Rec. 709, but it doesn't disappear completely. And if you do have it disappear completely, you lose a lot of that dynamic range that you're trying so hard to get. That said though, I did like the range that I was getting without using log. And in fact, when you do clip, the highlight roll off isn't that bad. So is a cinema camera made by the sensor size? Well, this is a micro four thirds sensor, not as big as a Super 35, but bigger than any other fixed lens camera. And again, same sensor size that you're getting with the GH4. Now you can't use speed boosters or anything, but you do have a longer lens than you're probably using on any of your other interchangeable lens cameras. You have a lens that goes past 150 millimeter. So you do have a great ability to get a shallow depth of field. And you have built-in NDs, which will help you get that shallow depth of field outdoors. So what about bitrate and chroma sampling? Does that make a cinema camera? 
Well, this has 8-bit 422 internal and 10-bit 422 out, and that output is a lot more than you're gonna get from most cameras in this price range. There is a problem with that 10-bit 422 out. Everywhere we look, Scoob, giggling green ghosts. <laughs> A big old ghosting effect, which was affecting me in multiple frame rates and system frequencies. This seems like something that could be a firmware fix, but I don't know if that would be the firmware of the camera or the Atmos recorder that I was using. But do any of these make a cinema camera? What I think makes a camera cinematic is a good image. If you can get a good image out of a camera, then it doesn't matter what kind of settings it has, what kind of frame rates it has. If you like the image that you're getting out of a camera, then that's what you want to shoot with. Not only that, but even if certain settings are technically better, we're talking about data, we're not talking about the actual image. If you like the image that you're getting off of the internal codec, not using V-Log, which I personally do with this camera, then go ahead and shoot like that. The image is what makes your film. As far as who should be using this camera, I think this is for people who are shooting live events and corporate videos during the week to make money so they can shoot their films during the weekends. If you have that kind of balance where you're shooting all the time and shooting in a bunch of different situations but maybe doing a little bit more event, ENG, videography type stuff, then this is the camera for you. It still has the ability to do narrative film well but it's geared slightly more towards ENG. There are one or two hardware things that bug me with this camera. First, there's a sensor in the EVF, which senses when your eye is up to it and it turns off the monitor. And that's fine, but you can't turn this sensor all the way off. So if you're shooting from the hip or something like that and you accidentally block the EVF, all of a sudden you lose your monitor for a little while. The electronic focus on the lens itself is a bit of a pain and the autofocus is downright useless. The quarter 20 screws on top feel a little bit flimsy and they don't exactly lock down all the way because of the curved handle. It's a beautiful design and it's probably comfortable to hold, but if you're using an external recorder or an onboard monitor or something like that, it does feel a little flimsy. Not like something that would break right away, but if you were owning this camera for a couple years, that would be one of the things that I would imagine would fail first. Other than that though, the body design is great. It's so comfortable to hold. It does feel very steady. The IS does a great job as well. Having dual card slots coupled with that long battery life, you could shoot forever. If I had to leave on a traveling documentary shoot where I was gonna be packing up all my gear into as few bags as possible, shooting different things every day, one day in the middle of the desert, one day shooting interviews and things like that, this would be the camera that I would take in a heartbeat. I know that it can handle everything. It is a little bit of a jack of all trades, master of none, but at this price point, that's perfect. I think this camera has lived up to the DVX name. I remember using the DVX 100 back when I was in film school, and I'm excited to see that Panasonic is bringing back these names like they've done with the Vericam. Guys, thank you so much for watching this review. If you feel like there's something that I missed about the DVX200, then leave a comment or come on down to Hot Rod Cameras and check it out yourself. Thanks as always, and don't forget to like and subscribe.